Hello and welcome everyone. Some days ago or so I uploaded a video and it was a bit unintentional that it was uploaded as a public video. I only made it for my friends. You can hear my voice is still a little bit ill but it was even worse on that video. So that was really not intended for public. That was a bit awkward but anyway. Someone asked me if I could make a video about this thing down here. I call it Spectral Beam. It's a frequency analyzer that looks like a bunch of beams. And you can see it pick up where my fundamental frequency is more or less. You know? Uh, it's not very accurate but it looks cool. So I will show you how I did it now. So the first thing you have to do is make a class that sits on, on the audio side of the thing. And the second thing you have to do is make a class that sits on the GUI side of the thing. So this is Spectral Beam Comp and this is Spectral Beam. Let's start with Spectral Beam. So what it has is it has um, a Juice DSP FFT because I have not written my own FFT library yet. I'm personally usually more of a fan of making my own stuff but well it's FFT. FFT is complicated and then I defined the FIFO to be an array of size 2 and size is basically this. You can only do that with integers to write it like this. It's a bit of an optimization. You probably know it from the FFT tutorial on the Juice website if you have made it. You should do that if you want to get into FFT. It's a very good tutorial in my opinion. Anyway, I also put some other helpers here like the size as float and inverted size. Not much is happening at the start. I'm just clearing the buffer and I'm making a Gaussian window. The size of the FIFO is size 2, so twice the size. In my processing method where I get the stereo samples, the number of channels and number of samples. First of all, I get the inverted channel thingy because in my sample loop, the first thing I do is is just getting the mid of the samples. This only works if your plugin is not in mid side mode right now because then this would yield left instead of mid. For the plugin I'm currently working on, I don't plan mid side functionality, so that's fine to me. Now, the next thing you want to do is just putting something into your FIFO at the current index. There is an index variable. Also, multiply with a window so that you get nice clean results for an analyzer because otherwise the side lobes on each harmonic will be a little bit stronger and that doesn't look that nice. I don't want to explain why that is now because I think people who are more versed in DSP could explain that much better if you search for that on YouTube. So you go on with the index and if the index has reached the size then you can finally start the processing. Put the index back to zero I mean. There is a FIFO and a buffer and they have the same size by the way. The difference is the FIFO is for the processing and the buffer is just a different buffer so that the things that later ask for the information can read it from the buffer without having to uh, deal with the FIFO that is constantly in processing all this stuff. Copying the FIFO to the buffer and then processing the buffer with a perform real only forward transform. And then I also put the ready boolean to true. As you can probably tell, the ready boolean is never set to false in this whole entire method. That is because that is the job of the component side. So now you already have something that constantly creates new buffers with FFT data and you just have to interpret them visually. So you make a component and it also inherits from timer because you update it in regular intervals. And well I made this a templated method because then I can just use different orders in my processor. Oops, I mean in the processor header. Uh, you can see that here I decided to go with order 11 in this case. So for higher order it doesn't look that smooth anymore but if you choose a too low order then it's just all over the place on the spectrum like especially the low end gets very blurry then. 11 is the perfect fit for that I think. I think it's 2048 samples which is also the same number of samples that is often used in wave tables for the reason that it's sort of close to the transitional frequency between audio rate and LFO and I think a similar logic also works here. Now in the constructor I'm just constructing the thing. Don't mind all this stuff that's just for my um, you know my personal component base class. I have an image here and the image it has the same size as the FFT but it only has a height of one pixel because we are stretching that out later. It doesn't need the whole height. I'm just saving the pixels and not making the entire image already. I don't know if that's the perfect way to do that. Now the paint method is really easy. I'm just setting the resampling quality to low because you know the image is nice anyway so I don't need a fancy resampling quality for the image. And then I'm drawing the image stretch to fit which is the 
rectangle placement, default. Timer callback is the interesting method and that's probably why you came here. So first of all, I'm loading the ready boolean into a new variable and I'm asking myself, is it ready yet? And if not, then return because we don't have a new buffer yet. But most of the time we will have new buffers and then all this stuff is happening. So I'm starting by getting the sample rate from the audio processor because I will need that later. Then I decided for two different colors, one for the background and one for the foreground and then I put a pointer to the buffer here where the FFT data is in. Then I set a lowest decibel limit minus 12 decibels and the highest limit 6 decibels. That is just values that I like to use. Here, the range of decibels and the inverted of the range because that is actually the thing that is used later and then it starts. So I'm going through the whole size and now I want to put for each x value of the image I want to put a pixel in it. Actually I should call this x that will make it more clear what it is because we're iterating through the x values of this image. Zero as the y value at all times because as you have seen this image is just one pixel high. We are starting by taking the x variable and dividing it through the size and that way we get a normalized value between 0 and 1 range. Multiplying that by 128 so that we get 0 to 128. Now we get the frequency of that pitch and that's done with my exam managers node to frequency hertz with rap method. As you can see, I called this one pitch because it is representing the frequency as um, pitch values, similar to how it's done on the MIDI note table. I had that in a different video already, but I'm showing it to you again. MIDI note table is also something that can go from 0 to 127 plus the top range, which would be 128. And there each pitch value has a frequency according to this formula that you can see here. Yeah, well, that's the same thing that happens here. The node to frequency hertz method, which looks a little bit different than on the website because it's using x2 instead of power. Then you get the frequency for that pitch. Now you want to know the bin index of that frequency. Now this is a lot of conversions already, but that's just how it is. I'm dividing the frequency by the sample rate and that way I get a value between 0 and 0.5 and then I'm multiplying that with the size and I get something between 0 and size half. I want to get the actual bin from that bin index so I use linear interpolation on that buffer with the floating point bin index to get a value that is sort of around there. You could use any type of interpolation for that. I just decided for linear interpolation because I think if I, I tried something more fancy it wouldn't make a big visual difference but we can try if we want to. So now we have a different interpolation technique. Maybe it looks a little bit cleaner, but I don't know if it's worth it because that's not the main feature. So I don't want it to waste CPU. Now that we know what exactly is the bin that we are reading from. Well, that's basically the magnitude of the bin, but it's not in decibels but it's just a number of between 0 and 1 or something. We want that to be in our desired decibel range. So what we do now is we convert gain to decibel, which is just this formula. The magnitude of the bin is in decibels. And now we want to map this back to our 0 to 1 range, but in a way that it fits to this range that we defined here. And after a bit of fiddling around, I came up with this formula. And I'm limiting it between 0 and 1 because obviously it can be that it's just exceeding 6 decibels or minus 12. And in that case, it should just be limited and not crash the plugin or do something unexpected. Now we have the mapped magnitude and we can actually now use that as an interpolation uh, value for the color to interpolate between the base color and, and the maximum amplitude color to get the new color. And the new color is the color that we use for that pixel. And then it goes on and on until this is done. And then we can actually set the spectral beams ready boolean back to false. Well, and then you repaint the thing. So that's how it works. I hope you liked this video. 